Afternoon everybody, Rich here, back for another video for the Diecast F1 review. Here today is the Prost Peugeot AP01 from the 1998 Formula 1 World Championship, and in the car is Olivier Panis. Now the Prost team went into 1998 with a lot of high hopes after a successful, if tainted, 1997 season. Uh, they were fairly successful having several podiums, but uh, the, t the season was marred by the accident that befell Olivier Panis where he broke both his legs. Um, he came back at the later part of the season and scored another point or two, but uh, 1997 was pretty successful. Things changed dramatically in 1998 with Prost, or Alain Prost, uh, initially criticising the Mugen Honda engines which he ditched for in favour of Peugeot engines. It's basically a straight swap between uh, Prost and Jordan. Prost taking the Peugeots and Jordan taking the Mugen Honda engines. Uh, and it didn't bode too well. Uh, but yeah, Alan Prost criticised the uh, Honda engines saying they were crap and went for a, a French engine which was pretty much just as, well, even more crap to be honest. Um, but the uh, the APA one, although a beautiful looking car, was tainted by the engine, by the gearbox, pr pretty much everything. It uh, failed its crash tests at the start of the season. Uh, had awful trouble with its gearbox. I think they tried a carbon fibre gearbox which failed at any given opportunity and the car just lacked downforce as well. Um, the, the, the season started off with the car having those uh, X-wings, which was basically those tower wings on the side uh, on the side pods, basically, yeah, extra aerofoils sticking three feet above the ground and did not look very attractive at all. Um, although looking back at it, compared to some of today's aerodynamic things, it's not too bad. Um, yeah, the car went into the first race basic, basically untested, and it showed um, only one point scored throughout the whole season, and uh, that came at the uh, attrition failed Belgian Grand Prix, thanks to Jano Trulli for picking up 6th place. Olivier Panis not scoring any points after his, his successful 97 season where he looked in contention for the championship. 1998 was one to forget. Um, the Peugeot engines were gutless and like I said the, haunt, the uh, gearbox was uh, pretty much useless. Um, but uh, looks can't always be the good thing, cause, well, the, the good, the good thing about the car was pretty much its looks. It was an unusual-looking car, as you can tell by the model. The nose is very long and high. The side pods are, well, the side pods are quite normally shaped, but the the area in front of the side pods is quite unusual. Um, that's really what all the car had going for it, and also the colour scheme as well. It was a, a pretty exotic-looking machine. Um, but yeah, only one point scored throughout the season, and uh, there were no highlights really. The only one point, well, the one point at the, the uh, Belgian Grand Prix was the uh, the only high point. And 1998 went on to be a season to forget. Um, but it really was sort of the spiralling downfall of the Prost team. I mean, one point in 1998, I think it was sort of nine points in 99, no points at all in 2000, and only four points in 2001. So the Prost team, Alan Prost never really turned around the Ligier team, and the team never really recovered from the 1998 debacle. Um, 2000 being the absolute uh, slum of it all, but uh, that's uh, history for you. And uh, it's also the first car to incorporate Alan Pross naming as well, because it's the AP01, whereas the first Pross was basically Elysier, and it was just Elysier JS41. No, no, and it was Elysier JS45, uh, but they changed the Elysier to Pross, but kept the JS45 uh, chassis number. Uh, so 1998 became the AP01. Um, and that came out, carried on for all four cars uh, after that. Um, yeah, not much else to talk about the car really. It wasn't very reliable, like I said, not very fast, and was just a plain embarrassment. Um, but yeah, onto the model itself. It's a, uh, of course, it's a mini chance model, as just, just the title will say. And uh, this car is actually a show car for the '99 season. But the only thing that really differentiates it from uh, the '99 car or the or the '98 car, what am I talking about? It's a show car. It's a '98 car chassis, but with a '99 livery. But seeing as both liveries are virtually the same, the only thing that you can tell the difference between is the is the, uh, the groove tyres. The '98 car had three grooves in the front tyre, whereas the '99 car had four grooves in the front tyre. Um, that's the only thing that really tells it apart. This has four grooves in it, which makes it a '99 spec car, but it's basically a show car. Um, I don't normally collect show cars, but some are quite collectible, and I bought this one because the race car wasn't available, and the liveries are virtually the same anyway, so um, who knows, um, until you look at the box basically, because on the box it says show car, if I just find the box, which is completely caked in dust, uh, as you can see here, and it says down here, Prost Grand Prix, 1999 show car, limited of 2222, so it's... Uh, 
not overly rare, well, it's, it's fairly rare I suppose, but I think this one's more rare than the actual race car, well, not as rare, it's probably more common than the race car, because the race car doesn't come up very often, but uh, anyhow, there we go, but uh, yeah, um, onto the, uh, well, I'll, I'll explain show cars another day, basically show cars is a previous year chassis with a current year's livery and things like that, um, I'll get to them another day, but uh, I'll move on to the car itself, and I have to adjust because I'm sitting on something and I shouldn't be, um, but the, uh, the car itself, a very exotic looking car, like I said, the, the nose of the car is very long and very, well it's a very high, very flat nose, we turn it, turn it this way to give the profile, something that Formula 1 is very much missing, the high noses, I think the low noses don't really work in modern Formula 1, I've also noticed as well the front wing end plates are very small, and they're actually minute, <coughs> pardon me, um, but yeah it's a uh, quite an unusual looking car, and the nose is very narrow as well, it's a very narrow nose. But the, bu the blue paint really does stand out. It's just a shame that the background is blue as well. <laughs> but uh, never mind. Of course, as well as the first cut of the narrow track generation. Have a, a rear profile of the car to get you an idea of the sculpting of everything. So it's quite a big car down the back. And the side the side pods are quite short. The side pods do not extend as far forward as the driver compartment or the driver cockpit. So we just turn it that way to give you an idea. The side pod stops just short of the driver driver's uh, seating position and uh, got the rear flap on the rear there and also what I was pointing out is these side pod design you can see how they're uh, how the, the design is you can't really get a good profile because the wheels annoy but you look at it from this angle you see the profiling of the area in front of the side pod if I can get my hand under it and you see the profiling of the side pods just there it's a really weird shape but it really does make it look quite an, an aggressive looking machine like I said the looks made the car stand out because the, the performance of it was bloody awful but uh, the looks are pretty good and also notice there's quite a bit of dust on this car as well even though it's been in the box it's pretty much caked in dust for some reason I did give, did give it a quick brush off but uh, there you go um, yeah the, uh, the looks of the car is pretty good the paintwork is amazing I don't know if you can actually well I don't know if the, if the, the viewfinder or the recording of this video actually makes the paintwork show up any better because I've got a light shining on it just to try and give it the uh, a bit more of a, a, a glare, but uh, that's all I can come up with. Um, but the side profile of the car is very nice. We just tip the car up to give you an idea. It's a very short wheelbase car, but uh, the nose makes the car sort of an extra 10 foot longer, if you see what I mean. And let uh, give it a top profile. Very nice looking machine it is. And we'll just do the usual, a short of a ponder underneath. Nothing really to look at, we have got some extra bits under here, got the uh, underneath of the nose, got the barge boards, and the suspension, and uh, all the usual gubbins underneath, you got the cross, it still says APO1 underneath in 1998, which means it is the actual 98 car, um, and they haven't actually changed the bottom just to make it sound show car -y, but uh, it gives you the idea, it is actually the APO1, as opposed to the show car. And you have a, a gamma, gamma around the back, or glass around the back. So you've got the diffuser there, quite tightly packed around there. And they're very nicely detailed it is. And we have a look, quick look in the cockpit. The cockpit is quite, quite a bit of detail in there actually. It's an unusual shaped steering wheel, all the buttons down there. And uh, in the driver's cockpit. Turn the other way to get a look at the driver. And once it uh, focuses. And, uh, oh come on, focus. There we go, got the PlayStation on the helmet there. And I could never never pronounce the uh, the, the title sponsor of this team. It is um, the French Tobacco Company. It's not actually shown on the car for obvious reasons. You know, it's uh, just the, the barcode. And I can never pronounce the uh, the proper name for the uh, the the, uh, the company. I know when it was um, sort of up, up to ninety five, it was Gitania, wasn't it? But this other company, I can't pronounce it. But never mind, uh, sort of from 96 to 90, no, from 96 to 2000 they had that sponsor, but I can never pronounce it. But uh, never mind. And uh, definitely a car to collect. Just because, of the, just because you know, it, it, it stands out, it's a nice paintwork, it's an unusual shaped car as well, it's quite an exotic shape. And it really does stand out uh, in a collection. And I really would recommend buying this one, if you, even, if it, even if it is just a show car. Because you can hardly tell the difference. It's only the the, the groove tire on the, or, the, or the extra groove on the front tires that makes it stand out. So um, I would recommend this one. 
it's not particularly rare. Well, the, the race car's rarer than the show car for some reason. Um, right on. Yeah. Um, is it? Yeah, well, I don't know. The, the show car is limited to 2,000 pieces. 2,222 pieces. And the race car should be more than that, but that seems to come. I don't seem to come up on in, on auctions very, or you know, on eBay very often. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm not really sure. This, this is sort of an enigma. This one, the the the, the, the pros that turns up most online is the APO2, which is the actual '99 race car. Completely different shape and uh, doesn't really stand out as much. It doesn't look as good, I don't think. But uh, that's my opinion. And yeah, it don't don't come up on eBay all that often. The APO1 that is. And uh, a good collector's op uh, a good collector's item would be to have the uh, tower wings attached as well on the side pot here, you know, sticking up in the air, makes that look unusual. I think it'd add a bit more value to it. But uh, there you go. The price-wise for this car, I think I paid about fifteen pounds for it. It was a sort of twenty US dollars. I'm not really sure if if you uh, for a show car anyway, you will want, want to pay more than that. Uh, the race car, I haven't got a clue. It, it's it doesn't often come up online. And the price wise varies, especially if it's a buy it now price. The buy it now price you can sort of skip, you know, because that's dealers trying to rip you off, so I wouldn't bother um, trying to buy one of those. But um, if you can get hold of it, even if it is just a show car, I would recommend it. I mean, it is a stunning looking machine. The blue, especially, and the shape also, because uh, it's an unusual shape. And uh, yeah, I would recommend this one definitely. Um, but yeah, it's uh, not much else I can say about it. It was a pile of shit on the track, but looked good doing it, if you know what I mean. It looked good being a piece of shit. But yeah, that's all I have to say on the matter. Um, not much else to say, really. Um, if you want to request a review, um, then by all means, I've got a few lying around. I mean, I've got 150 plus cars to review. Um, so if you just want to give a rough idea of what you want, and I shall try and have an opinion about it. But... Uh, there we go. But anyway, that's my rant about the Prost. And, um, yeah, so anyway, anyway, this is uh, me, Rich, signing off, logging off and disappearing. And I shall return with another review. So, uh, bye for now.